Computer memory used to be costly and limited. It took up a lot of space. So the first programmers only used six digits to represent dates rather than eight. For instance, my birthday, uh, September 16th, 1979, would be represented by 091679. But then as we got closer to the year 2000, some people began to worry that at the stroke of midnight, when everybody was partying like it was 1999, and 1231999 changed to 010100, every computer in the world would crash. This became known as the Y2K problem. I know, Y2K is just a joke to you. But I know better because I was there. I was just 21 years old and studying computer programming at the University of Delhi in October of 1999. I had a good GPA, uh, around 4.35. The Americans offered hundreds of us jobs in Washington, D.C. to help fix this Y2K problem before it happened. I was issued a 90-day work visa and we lived in dormitories at George Washington University. Every night at 9.30 p.m., a bus would pick us up and drive us to a warehouse three blocks from the White House. From 11 p.m. until 7 a.m., and sometimes from 11 p.m. until 11 p.m. the next day, we would write and rewrite software. But keep in mind, this was back in the 1990s, when the Democrats and the Republicans worked together beautifully under President Bill Clinton. Yes, I know. He had a wandering eye for the ladies. But still, he took this problem very seriously. When Senator Daniel Patrick Moynihan from New York told him he needed to put together a task force, President Clinton did it. And everyone on both sides of the aisle took this task force very seriously. I am very proud to have been a part of it. Every day except Sundays, for three months, I wrote and I rewrote new code. Not only was the government taking this problem very seriously, but the Y2K task force's coordinator, Josh Koskinen, got every single major corporation in the world to cooperate and contribute to a universal solution. Yes, I know, some of you think, but nothing happened. That's because we fixed the problem. My superior was a man named Dave Koppelman. And Dave Koppelman, he was so happy with my work, uh, he gave me a nickname. Patch Adams. Uh, you know, from the movie with, with Robin Williams. Uh, he played a physician who wore a red clown's nose. Uh, Dave Koppelman would say to me, Hey, look who's here today. It's Patch Adams. <laughs> I mean, not because I was a physician or wore a red clown's nose. <laughs> Because I wasn't, and I didn't. <laughs> no, because we referred to the software that we wrote and rewrote all day and all night as patches. So Dave Koppelman would call me Patch Adams, or, or the Patch Fan, or the Patch Meister, or Mr. Patchamundo. <laughs> Sometimes uh, Dave Koppelman would sing to me, Patches, I'm depending on you, son. To pull the family through, my son, it's all left up to you. <laughs> oh, Clarence Carter is the best. I learned so much from Dave Koppelman. On Sundays we had off, and I would go to the museums and see the sites. The Smithsonian, the National, the Washington Monument. Washington, D.C. is such a wonderful place. Uh, yes, we have the Taj Mahal, but you have the Lincoln Memorial. Abraham Lincoln? He is my favorite. Next to Bill Clinton. What can I tell you? I fell in love with America. Well, also I met Dipti here. She was also here on a Y2K task force visa. For those of you who still think that nothing happened, that Y2K was a joke, 
You couldn't be more wrong. At the stroke of midnight on December 31st, America's power grid almost went down. From the Middle West to the entire East Coast, more than a dozen nuclear power plants came within one half hour of melting down. There were other issues with delays in Medicare payments and ATMs malfunctioning all over the world and Defense Department satellite failures, but we stopped it. We fixed everything. Me and Deepthi, and uh, Dave Koppelman, and Daniel Patrick Moynihan, and Josh Koskinen, and yes, even Bill Clinton. There were thousands of others who helped fix hundreds of failures and glitches. That is why Y2K is only a joke. Because we fixed it. There is no statue devoted to the Y2K task force or to Josh Koskinen. Deepthi and I live in Reston, Virginia now. We both became American citizens on July 4th, 2004. We have two children, uh, David and Anika. We are all doing well for the moment. We are all healthy. Uh, Deepthi and I are both working from home. And with the schools closed because of the pandemic, uh, David and Anika are both home too. We have enough food and toilet paper. Dave Koppelman told everyone on Facebook that he has a fever. But so far, no cough and not to worry. He still calls me the patch man. <laughs> I keep wondering about the task force for this pandemic. I know there is one. The president comes on TV every day to remind us and to talk about what a fantastic job he is doing. But the governors of every state in this beautiful union have to outbid each other for ventilators. I'm sorry, but I, I don't have much faith in this president or, or in his vice president or their task force. But I do have faith in America and in Americans, in the first responders, uh, the doctors and the nurses and the healthcare workers who are risking their lives, as well as the entrepreneurs who are making ventilators out of vacuum cleaner parts. In the end, it will be them who save us who saved this country. It's already far worse than Y2K, I know. But if it doesn't get much worse than it is right now, we'll be okay. And the people we have to thank for making it so We won't ever know any of their names. <laughs>